Well, AIR Project is an uh, artist in residence. That's how we got the word AIR. Out of that grew uh, Outside AIR, which is a festival that will present the artists who are in residence as well as other artists. It grew out of our desire to really develop the Great Hall and the People's Palace as a, a venue for contemporary performance. The live art sort of scene in London is really vibrant but actually lacks great spaces. So firstly, it's really useful for um, people working in live art in, the, in London and in the, in the UK. And one of the reasons we called it Outside Air is that we wanted to give support to artists who fall a little outside of the, of the main sort of funding stream. We presented two performances. Uh, one is Ghost Letters by Leibniz, and that's uh, Ernst Fischer and Helen Spackman. Ghost Letters is our newest production. It's a documentary kind of project. It's both, both about memory, it's both about the past, but also about new pieces in the future. We have worked with Ernst. Ernst has come to work with our students before, and so it was really wonderful to have him there. And then the other piece was my own company, Split Bridges, and that's because Peggy Shaw was chosen to be one of the um, artists in residence. I am part of the AIR Festival because I am an artist in residence at Queen Mary. I was asked to participate in a performance and I decided to ask Lois if she would do Lost Lounge with me, which is a brand new show we just did in New York. Lost Lounge came from a frustration about living in New York for four, over 40 years. It was initially a frustration. It's turned into the love of trying to figure out what memory is. So the show is an investigation of all that. Lost Lounge I thought was really fantastic and really exciting. I thought there was a really interesting and really relevant investment in an exploration of, of loss and the, the loss of spaces to gentrification and I think they tied it really neatly into concerns that the East End has about the effects of the Olympics and the way in which it's being sort of redeveloped maybe with a, to a, to, in a way that's going to overwrite some of the deeper histories of the, of the space. Those were the two main performances that we did. We did some other events, however. I mean, we did try to use domestic settings in a public space to encourage more, more conversations. The long table um, allows for anyone to come to the table. So we did a couple of those, one on artists in residence, and then we did a long table on putting the people back in people's palace because we are working on inhabiting it as a contemporary live art space but I think there's a lot of other ways to inhabit the building. The People's Palace was a huge complex for the people. There's swimming pools, spas, theaters, everything, and it burned down, then they built this. And just all the, feeling, all the people who frequented those buildings, it leaves emotions, the, the fabric itself, all these old curtains that have been here for 100 years, they, they leave emotions behind. We also had a Tea Party conversation that featured Peggy Shaw and Ron Athey. The idea behind the Tea Party conversation was to bring together two artists who wouldn't normally be in conversation with each other. Ron will take up his residency uh, here at Queen Mary quite soon, and he will perform in the second Outside Air, which will be happening in November. To run a space like the Great Hall, it takes a lot of communication, it takes a lot of systems, it takes a lot of organization. And we had about 12 to 15 students working in those positions. Louise, in particular, got to sit right next to Lori, who's done you know, television in New York. She's toured with almost every contemporary theater company. And she took the time to literally teach Louise, who had never done sound before, how to do sound, and she was perfect at it. Uh, in Lost Lounge, I was um, lucky enough to work uh, alongside Laurie, who was initially doing all the sound and visuals on the performance. Um, and obviously, it's a bit much for one person to do. So she did all the visuals and lighting, um, while I um, did the sound, which was um, Vivian Stoll's wonderful soundscapes and all the songs that they'd chosen to do. So to actually have hands-on production experience with a professional production manager is is probably the equivalent of having a, a, a mentor, you know, who, who is a practicing artist. The students are around us all the time. We are constantly working with them, talking with them, uh, teaching them our craft. Tracy Hamill, our technical manager, she worked a lot with a lot of the students in terms of, you know, 
getting the show up, taking the show down and that sort of thing. Oh, the student volunteers have been absolutely brilliant. Obviously, this is something they've decided to kind of help us out on. And with the particular health and safety issues with working in the space at the moment, we couldn't do, we literally could not do this without them. They've been on the doors, they've been helping with audience management, and yeah, they've done an absolutely sterling job, and several of them have actually stayed behind and are helping with the get-out. I think it's been a really big learning curve for them as well, because they've seen a production from beginning to end, which is not always something they get to see within court. Courses. So yeah, I'm hoping they've got a lot out of it too. The People's Palace has great potential, obviously, because I'm throwing my sort of heart into it at the moment with this project. And there are loads of wonderful characteristics about it that, that, that people say, oh yeah, but then the practicalities of how to use it are, are kind of tough. So you have to be a bit creative. I think it's a fantastic space. It's a great space, full stop. And I hear that there are sort of plans afoot to open it up more again to the neighbourhood and stuff, which is all fantastic stuff. Right? Everyone that's come in has been amazed at seeing the space used in this way, so hopefully it will encourage the, the college to continue doing that in the future. Well, one of the reasons we brought the audience onto the stage was the intimacy, but also it's messed up. I mean, you can't stand on the stage anymore and be heard. Uh, it's too echoey, it doesn't, it doesn't physically work anymore, the theatre. The giant space here is difficult. So this was a way of just grabbing a part of it. This was our first outside air, and I think that it, it went really well. I'm very pleased and very satisfied with how it went. I think the weekend was a real success. Uh, we had a good audiences, big audiences, a really diverse um, array of audiences as well. We've set it up now as a kind of system that we can just re-inhabit and take forward, and that's a big result.